Welcome to the vCloud Automation Center video on tenant management. In this video, we're going to look at a high-level overview of tenant concepts. We'll explore using a single default tenant versus configuring multiple custom tenants. In addition, we'll demonstrate how to configure tenant properties for the default as well as custom tenants. A tenant is an organizational unit with specific resources, users, and policies. A tenant can represent an entire company or separate divisions or business units within larger companies. vCloud Automation Center can have one or more tenants in a shared cloud environment where multiple companies, divisions, or independent groups are using a common infrastructure fabric. Tenants are useful for isolation of users, resources, and services from one tenant to those of another tenant. Most companies will only need to have a single tenant. As part of the initial installation and configuration process, the system admin configures the default tenant's properties. The tenant admin can further subdivide their group into one or more smaller organizational groups called business groups. Business groups provide further isolation of resources, policies, and services. However, more sharing is allowed across business groups than across tenants. Each tenant has unique configuration policies that are specific to that tenant. Let's look at some of the attributes that define a tenant. Each tenant has one or more identity stores that are used to authenticate users. These identity stores can be Active Directory or any open LDAP directory service. The management portal can have its own URL and that portal can have unique branding specific to that tenant. Each tenant can also have their specific email servers. Now that you have a better understanding of tenants and their attributes, let's demonstrate how to modify those configuration attributes. The first step to managing tenants is to log into the vCloud Automation Center as the system administrator. The initial installation creates a default tenant. You can either modify the default tenant to meet your needs or add additional tenants. For this part of the demo, we're going to show you how to modify the default tenant. Later, we'll show you how to add additional tenants. The first configuration change is to create custom branding for our fictitious company, the Green Company. We'll start this process by clicking the Branding menu item. The Green Company wants to change the logo, portal name, and color of the user interface. To do that, I uncheck the Use Default Branding checkbox. Then I select the logo that I want to use to replace the default VMware logo. I then add a new name for the Green Company Cloud, add the hex color that is compatible with the Green Company logo, and finish by entering the company name. Once I have finished adding all these attributes, I click Next to move on to the footer branding changes. For our purposes, we are going to take the default footer branding color and not customize it further. However, you can also add copyright, privacy, policy, and contact links if needed. To implement these changes, I click Update. As you can see, the management interface has already been rebranded to the green company look and feel. The next step is to link to an email server. You'll need to add email servers for both inbound and outbound traffic. For our demo, I'm just going to show you how to configure the inbound email server. I populate my inbound server definition with the appropriate information. I can test my connection information to make sure it works, and when I am comfortable, I then click the Add button. Next, follow the same process for the outbound server. After completing that process, your email servers needed for notifications and approvals is ready to go. This completes the customization of the default tenant. This is the process that you will most likely use in a single tenant environment. Next, we will show you how to add additional tenants, but before that demo, let's review some multi-tenant concepts first. If additional tenants are added, by default, they will inherit the configuration and policies of the default tenant. They will have the same URL, branding, email server, and authentication and identity store unless they are specifically customized. However, each tenant admin can override the default tenant settings. 
For example, they can have their own unique branding and URL with the tenant name as part of that URL. They can also have their own identity stores and email routers. If you want to have multiple tenants, each with their own branding, URL, identity store, and email servers, it is best not to use the default tenant or only use it for attributes which will span multiple tenants. For example, let's say you want the same email servers for multiple tenants. Then you can create separate tenants for the Green Company and Purple Limited. Each tenant has a unique branding, portal, URL address, and identity store, but share a common email server as defined in the default tenant. In addition, each tenant and business group can have their own dedicated or shared infrastructure resources. However, resource reservations will be covered in a separate video. Now that you have a good understanding of tenant concepts, let's take a look at how to configure a new custom tenant. For our demo, we have already configured the default tenant to meet the green company's specific branding needs. Next, we will demo how to configure a new tenant for Purple Limited, a division of the green company. I am still logged in as the system administrator. To add a new tenant, I click the Add Tenant button at the top left of the tenant management page. After adding some descriptive info about the tenant, I customize the management portal URL by adding a tenant name which will be incorporated into the address. When finished, click the Submit and Next button to move on to defining an identity store for this tenant. By default, there are no identity stores defined. To add a new identity store, click the button in the upper left corner. Add name, description, URL, and active directory names and credentials to the identity store definition. When complete, click Test Connection or add to move to the next step. The final step is to add administrators who will manage the tenant and define its infrastructure services. When complete, click Add to complete the tenant definition process. You have successfully added the purple limited tenant. However, you will notice that the branding is still the green company's branding. To change the tenant branding, you will need to log out as the system admin and log in as Tony. Purple Limited's Tenant Administrator. After logging in as Tony, I select the Administrator's Management function and then select Branding. As you can see, the branding is still the green company. After successfully selecting a new logo, portal name, and color, I'm ready to update the branding for my Purple Limited tenant. With the update of the branding, we now have completed the definition of the second tenant. This completes our overview of vCloud Automation Center tenant administration. To get additional information about tenant management, I recommend you watch some of the videos listed here. The business group videos will demonstrate how to further subdivide tenants into additional organizational groupings and reserve resources for each group. The service management videos will demonstrate how to configure business appropriate service catalogs for each tenant business group or individual users. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and we hope that it was informative. To learn more about vCloud Automation Center there are additional videos available.